So here we are back at it again. Today we're going to be putting together a PC for 150 bucks, or if you're in Australia, 200 Australian dollars roughly. And we're going to see if we can play the new title, Kingdom Come Deliverance. So what we've got here is a 7850. Now we picked this up on a deal from Cash Converters for 25 bucks. We've got here the uh, AliExpress uh, X3430. Now these CPUs are so cheap. They're four cores, four threads. And you can see here, I've delidded this. Now, these are the first gen i5-750s. So I didn't even know that you could delid these things. So I'm gonna see if the temperatures here today are actually pretty good. Now you may notice there is an AMD cooler here on the table because I'm gonna to attempt to do something pretty stupid here today. Uh, it might be awesome, give or take. And if it works, I'll make a separate video on it, but we're gonna try and mount an AMD cooler to this motherboard because I kind of don't want to put a new uh, cooler on which costs around 30 bucks or so because it'll blow the budget out a little bit. And also I just think it would look really cool if you could use these AMD coolers that come included with your new Ryzen CPUs um, on something like this where it would really make a perfect combination. So also you guys have been telling me that Carl from Bitwit, uh, he made a video where he went and bought a PC off Craigslist, a used PC for $550. Now I'm subscribed to him, I watched the video and yeah, he did overpay big time for that PC. So, um, I mean, if it's his first time buying something off Craigslist, then I wish him luck. It's a lot of fun. I hope he gets into the deal hunting thing and sort of joins the already awesome community. There's a lot of YouTubers out there, myself included. We do deals hunting. We love hunting used parts and the price performance it brings to offer. But it does remain to be seen what he will do with that uh, rig. He did hint at the end of his video that he was gonna compare it to a new PC. I just hope he's not gonna go out and buy like a $140 GTX 1050, put together a new PC for a similar price and then say the new PC is so much better because it wouldn't really be fair to pick up the cheapest new parts and then compare that to literally the most expensive used parts out there. But with all that aside, let's take apart this PC here, clean all these parts individually down and then put it back together, overclock it. Hopefully we can get this thing to fit too. And yes, I know this thing's upside down. I just don't really know why I haven't bothered to put it downside up. So we just pulled the motherboard out. It's a little bit dirty. We're gonna give it a clean soon as well as the case. Uh, but the CPU in here is an i5-650. Now, these were the only generation of i5 desktop SKUs that had two cores. So the CPU we're swapping it for is the Xeon X3430. Now this is very similar to the i5-750. It's got four cores, four threads, and it'll do a better job of overclocking, especially after we've delitted it. So in the previous build, we pulled out these two two gigabyte sticks of memory, and you may have noticed that we put in a four gigabyte stick. Well, in this build, we're doing the exact same thing. Uh, we're putting in two four gigabyte sticks of memory and taking out the two two gigabyte sticks. And so essentially what we're doing is we're not losing any memory out of our stack. We're just changing it around. So if we do come into a four slot motherboard, we can then put eight gigabytes of RAM in. Uh, since this only has two slots of memory, we'll go with the two four gigabyte sticks and that'll give it eight gigabytes of memory and make it still able to be viable for playing the games. So now the motherboard and case, they're already pretty clean. So all I had to do was give it a quick data vac and now it's looking really good. But now we've got to put uh, the delitted CPU on, but that needs a clean first. You can see I've only delitted it and this glue is still around the edges. So we're gonna take that off with a plastic card and then we're gonna insert this, put the liquid metal on and see if we can install that AMD cooler. We might as well use all that excess on this GPU die here, so at least we're not putting it to waste.
since we put liquid metal on the CPU die and also the uh, GPU die, I'm actually just going to test this out to make sure everything's booting up okay. Even check the temperatures in the BIOS because the CPU cooler, even though it's mounted with two screws diagonally, it is touching the capacitors. So just want to make sure everything's checking out okay and the temperature's fine on the CPU and then we'll put the whole build together. So we've got the rig booted up. It is giving a signal on the capture card and we're also in the BIOS here and the temperatures are looking absolutely fine. So Thunderbirds are go. So we've got the overclocks working now and we got the GPU to 1050 megahertz on the core, got the memory overclocked on that too. That's absolutely fine, but the CPU is overheating a little bit. Well, not throttling yet, but it's getting very close to throttling. So that does indicate that the cooler is maybe even just like one mil off contacting the CPU heatsink. So we're gonna take this apart and see if we can uh, maybe just do a quick bang job and bang that side of the cooler down so it fits over those capacitors easier. So we've just overclocked the CPU and that's the 3.8 gigahertz. Gives us a score of around 450 Cinebench points. And the GPU is also overclocked max on the sliders with the current BIOS. Now, the liquid metal on the GPU die as well is helping, I believe, with temperatures on this particular model. It's running really well. Uh, you can see in the graphs, it's, um, and this is with a fan profile that's actually a custom fan profile. So it's not even that loud. You can hear this is about as loud as the system gets. Uh, even when it's running games. So impressive for the acoustics, but we've ran the first benchmark here, Metro Last Light, and we've got a score of 59 average FPS with the same settings as what uh, Kyle said he used in his. So uh, we do have the performance that is beating an average FPS, but we can see there with the 0.1% lows, you can automatically see that they're gonna be somewhere around 10, uh, which is actually quite low. Uh, so his uh, PC is running a little bit smoother, and if anything, I'd probably have to attribute that to this hard drive that's in here. It is a little bit slow. If there's one thing I would replace in this system, it would be the hard drive with something that's at least from 2013. Uh, as this hard drive is from 2010, it's a little bit slow. But with that aside, let's see if this PC behind me can run Kingdom Come Deliverance because it says the minimum specs are a 7870, but I believe this machine, as overclocked as it is, with that AMD cooler on it, could run this game. So behind me now, we've got the rig actually running Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's a 720p upscale to 1080p and it's on low settings, but we're getting over 60 FPS in this game and it's actually really smooth. So 
the below minimum spec requirements is running this game absolutely fine. But with that said, let's move over to a conclusion now. So there it is guys, the $150 PC, everything is out on the table. We pulled this thing apart, put it back together again with an AMD cooler. And keep in mind, we changed all the thermal paste around on both the CPU, GPU, even deleted that CPU. And the results in the end were actually really impressive because we used a cooler that would otherwise be sitting around, like I said before, collecting dust, and we made it work for us instead of having to go out and buy a $30 cooler like the Cooler Master 212 or the AliExpress VTG5, we were actually able to extract the maximum performance on this motherboard, which is the H55M and the X3430, because it has a pretty low multiplier on the CPU, overclocking this thing to 3.8 gigahertz is about only really where you can expect this thing to go, even with a better cooler on board. So the AMD cooler impressed me at 90 degrees. It is running a little bit hot in the benchmarks, but in games it's going around 80 degrees, and that's absolutely fine, considering we're just coming out of uh, summer here, and the ambients are quite high. But of course, what about gaming? Well, we did overclock the GPU and we did put some liquid metal on there because we put too much on the CPU. And in this case, the liquid metal did a really good job. The fans were not too noisy. They're on a custom fan profile, but they're still keeping the graphics card around about 60 degrees, which was very impressive. And the GPU was near 100% all the time. And this was on the max overclocks for the current BIOS. So it couldn't really get better in terms of the uh, GPU cooling and also the CPU in terms of their overclocks. They did really well on both fronts and we did it on an extremely low budget. And when we contrast that to uh, Bitwit's computer, we did get performance in Metro Last Light that did beat it on the average FPS. The 0.1% lows and the 1% lows were a little bit worse. And that's mainly because I think uh, Kyle's machine didn't have an SSD in it. So that would make a difference, especially on this PC where the hard drive is a little bit slow. It can cause problems if background processes are loading and causing stuttering, especially in those games. Uh, but Kingdom Come Deliverance, that was extremely smooth. I was absolutely blown away by the performance. This is the latest and greatest title, and we're running it below minimum recommended specs, and we've got it running over 60 FPS at 1080p. Now keep in mind, it is upscale from 720p to 1080p, uh, but really none the wiser, six or seven year old hardware, it's running this game absolutely fine. Anyway, if it's one thing to take out of this, well, two things. It is, uh, first of all, Bitwit, I look forward to seeing more content that you're doing on used price performance. There's a whole community out here. It's uh, phenomenal, it's a lot of fun. I hope to see you have a lot of fun with these type of videos too. And another thing as well is if you guys look at these videos, uh, when you've got these neglected parts, and I'll put a link to a build I recently did up here, if you get these parts that people think are just old and they don't work properly anymore, and you take them and you extract all the good out of them, then you can really put together something that just runs the latest titles absolutely fine with smooth FPS as we saw that Kingdom Come Deliverance. That actually shocked me at how well it was playing the game. So I could have an enjoyable experience on this thing and I could do it for 150 bucks. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop them in the comments section below. Let me know what you think of that AMD cooler on the Intel motherboard. I guess I'll have to make a separate video outlining the process of doing that as it was a bit of a hack and slash method. It didn't take too long but the results were quite impressive when we compare it especially to the previous stock Intel cooler, which is much smaller and much lighter. So I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Anyway, the message. At the end of the day, I've got a PC here behind me that I can go and flip and make a couple of hundred bucks on. So man, I did it again. Too much. Like this thermal grizzly stuff, it just, uh, it's like you've got to have surgeon hands just to pull a little bit of it out. And yes, I know this thing's upside down. I just don't know really why.